In this video, I'd like to talk about a card at any number using Mnemonica stack or any memorized deck stack, such as Aronson stack. Uh, this is an update to a previous video I'd made on Mnemonica and ACAN, and I just felt like I've gotten a lot better with the video, so I wanted to update that video. Um, it's not the best quality, and I wanted to explain things a little bit better. So this is kind of going to be a recap of that video and everything in it. So I'd like to go over the main way I've seen uh, some larger professionals use Mnemonica stack uh, to do a card at any number. And this is probably the most advanced way and the hardest way. Uh, of course, it's looks pretty powerful when you can nail it. Of course, there's sometimes sometimes it'll be easy. Sometimes it'll be uh, much more difficult and essentially what you want to do is you know ask for a card and ask the spectator to name a number and they're gonna give you a card and they're gonna give you a number and you want to try to place that card at that number right every once in a while probably uh, I guess one out of 52 times you'll get that number exactly so they may say two of spades and ten you'll all you just do is deal down ten cards you'll hit the hit the two of spades every time looks like a complete miracle um there's actually a video uh, i've seen of one of the one of the famous magicians um online he does that he actually asks an audience member that and i think it's the ace of spades and seven and I know he's using Mnemonica stack because you can see the order and he just, he nails it. He takes it out of the box, the spectator counts down, he nails it. It was just uh, basically a softball was handed to him. Um, so that's the rare occurrence that's going to happen. So most of the time you're going to have to try to position that card. Um, hopefully if you can get it uh, fairly close, the number in the card, for what the spectator names, you can add cards or subtract cards either from the top or bottom of the deck. So what I mean is if they say the two of spades and they say 13, well then you know uh, the normal position of the two of spades is 10, so you just gotta, you have to add three cards to the top of the deck to put the two of spades now at the number 13. Um, one thing you can do is do single shuffles like that you're just shuffling a single card throwing it on the bot uh, and throwing the remainder of the deck on top that will move the number of cards uh, something you know, I mean you just count the number of cards and you do that for like one two three and that'll move the number of cards you need to the top of the deck and we'll put that card where it needs to be in the 13th position another way you could do that what I actually prefer is you can say, you know, hey, it's not on top of the deck. You can see it's not on bottom of the deck. And you count three cards off as well. You just casually place them on top. No one's none the wiser. You've now taken the three cards, put them on top, and that two of spades is now in the 13th position. Right? Um, now, if they name a num. Uh, actually, let's do also if, let's say, going backwards, if they were to say two of spades and seven, it's the same thing, You can run, but you do it from the top. So you could run three cards off the top. You could say, hey, it's not on the uh, bottom of the deck. It's not on top of the deck. Just casually place them down there. Now you've removed three cards, depending on which method you use. So now the two of spades is number seven down in the deck. Then you count down your seven, you'll hit the two of spades. Um, if it's, this trick becomes very difficult though when the number is a lot further off. Like if they say two of spades and they say 30, like you have to start doing some mental gymnastics and you have to figure out what card you need to get to in the deck in order to, you know, cut a certain amount of cards by passing them or whatever to the top of the deck 
or the bottom of the deck and it, it can be it can become extremely difficult um, I've seen also a method used where they actually take it out of the card box they have the deck in the card box and as they're taking the deck out of the card box are able to only allow a certain number of cards to come out of the deck leaving some behind then they'll grab these cards and put place them on top again like this is probably going to take a lot of practice okay uh, and also just I think it just takes a lot of mental gymnastics I call it trying to figure out what card you need to get to how many you need to get on top bottom da 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 so that's why that version can become extremely difficult um, so I have a version that I prefer essentially you're going to force the number so you're going to ask for the card and let's say they say the two of spades now you know you got to force the number 10 on them or you could do this method where you just if you know you're good at forcing the number seven you could just displace the number of cards you need off the top of the deck and then force the number seven and it'll be in the right position um, but I have a video I made recently on number forces that are good for pretty much any magic trick but especially for mnemonica stack trick like this or Aronson stack trick for a card at any number and uh, my favorite method uses a watch where you basically one of the old-fashioned uh, watches with the dial and you you get the uh, minute hand to the number that you need it to be at and then the spectator thinks they're still turning it but they're actually not so you're forcing that number on them when you look at the watch you look at the minute hand and you get the the, the number that you need if you watch that video it'll make more sense um, also the toxic force can be used I talk about that in the video the toxic force uh, can be used to force any number between 1 and 52 just like the watch uh, force can and then there's a, a another force I mentioned in there um, it's for forcing the number 9 and there's also one last force I didn't mention in that video but anytime you need to force the number 9 with a deck uh, you would count you would ask them for a number between uh, 10 and 20 if they say 13 you count down 13 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 you add those two numbers together which is 4 1 2 three four and you'll get to the ninth card um oh yes there was one more uh, force i talked about and that's using a pair of dice the bottom and tops of the dice will always add up to seven so the spectator can roll so you could depending on the number of dice you use uh, you could either force seven fourteen or twenty one and then again or hey twenty eight any any multiple seven um although Probably if you start doing two or more die, they may notice that it's always adding up to seven. Well, I guess unless you keep like a running total going of all the, the die. But anyway, um, and then you can try to, you know, you don't have to hit it exactly. Like I said before, there's ways to get cards off the top and bottom of the deck. So if you were to, you know, force the number 14 using a pair of dice but you uh, needed the card you needed to force the you need the card to be at like the number 17th position uh, then you could do that method I was telling you before you can just add some cards um, one last way you can also take cards off the top or bottom involves the double undercut and you're going to count riffle off you're going to count up the number of cards that you need so in this case there's one two three i'm going to catch a pinky break and then if you double undercut we're at that break 
it will transfer those cards to the bottom, if that makes sense. So like, let's say I want to take that card, put it on the bottom. If I'm just going to do one card, I'll get a break, pinky break, transfer it to a thumb break, do a double undercut. That card has now gone to the bottom of the deck. And you can do that with as many cards as you need to do. And the same thing works for the bottom of the deck, but instead, uh, what you do is you catch that breaks, like that's under one card, you're going to swing cut, catch a break there, and then you're going to bring those back with a double undercut, and that will take the bottom card to the top, or the number of cards that you have uh, under the break. So if you riffled off like three, if I needed to transfer three, I've got a break with three cards, I'm going to swing them come back, hold the break with the pinky, the new break, and then double undercut to that. And that will take three cards from the bottom and put them on top. So those are my favorite methods for a card at any number using a memorized deck such as Mnemonica or Aronson stack. Uh, let me know what you think. Uh, I leave a thumbs up if you found this helpful and subscribe because I'm going to be releasing more mnemonica tricks, some good powerful ones, um, some good advanced stuff. So guys, stay tuned and thanks for watching.